beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam it is also said by the recitation of Srimad Bhagavatam the Supreme Lord becomes at once arrested within one's heart there are, these are some of the great advantages of the age of Kali and Maharaj Priksha took all the advantages and did not think any ill of the age of Kali true to his Vaishnav Vaishnavit cult. So what we have here is an interesting dynamic which is characterized by this particular age. Uh, Kalo doshani de raja nasti eko maha gunaha. Kalo doshani de. This verse is spoken by Srila Sukadeva Goswami to Maharaj, to King Parikshit, and mentioned in the Bhagavatam in the 11th canto, where it's mentioned that in this age of Kali, hmm, there are many faults. In fact, there are so many faults. Mm -hmm. A fault is sometimes even perceived as an, a, a good intentioned act that went in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. For some, for an instance, just like if you, if a, a poor, somewhat dissolute person comes and begs for you and you feel some compassion in their heart, in your heart towards that person, you might give that person some remuneration in the form of some financial gratuity. But then after receiving it, that person will go out and do something with that, such as use it for sinful activity or become intoxicated, something sinful. Um, although you felt some concern for that person's somewhat dissolute or what we might say, I don't know, deprived position in life. And out of the goodness of your heart, you simply gave them a donation or some money, but he uses it for a sinful activity and you also get a reaction for that. And you also get a reaction of the sinful activity that he performed because by giving him that money, you facilitated his act. That's the age of Kali. And that's the age of Kali. So it's a very bad age. But here, and because the age is so bad is that there's one facility that Krishna has somewhat given to the living entities in this age, and that is that although one may think of doing something wrong, either morally wrong or by civil law, it is considered to be an offense or some bad act or even say something that will cause persons some distress if you don't do it, but you simply think of it, there's no reaction. Now here, as it mentions, this is simply because of this age of Kali, because the age is so bad that even well-intentioned persons become consciously polluted by the atmosphere. Sometimes if you walk into a place that is sinful, your thoughts in your mind also drift in that same direction. But, and in previous ages, as it's mentioned here, that means in such a yuga, Tupura yuga, Treta yuga, those thoughts would automatically cause you a reaction. But in Kali Yuga, no unless you actually carried out the activity itself, then obviously the reaction would come upon you. But this is the special feature of this age. So therefore, and of course, 
the opposite is also interesting because simply by thinking of doing a good act to someone, one gets that benefit. Even if one does not perform the good act, but thinks, oh, I would like to help that person by, uh, you know, assisting them in their, in something in their life. In other words, you want to do good to others in some form, even materially, and especially spiritually. There is some benefit and you get credit for that thought. Uh, this is the uh, special feature of this age of Kali. And in previous ages, you would also get benefit for good thoughts and also reactions for bad thoughts. But in this age, you get benefits for good thoughts and no reactions for bad thoughts unless you carry them out. But the problem is, is if, if, if the negative thoughts come into the mind and they're allowed to stay there, they get stronger simply by having them present in the consciousness, you actually give them strength and then they become more and more influential. And then one may, if one allows it to stay a certain period of time, too long, we might say, then uh, you're victimized by the activity. But therefore, it says that one should always keep the mind in a pristine uh, nature, in other words, pristine consciousness. Pristine consciousness, pristine means pure or clear, and that is Krishna consciousness. So here it says that one by, by chanting the holy names of the Lord, or by discourse on the... Uh, activities that are mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam about the glories of the Supreme Lord, the Lord becomes presence in one's heart. So taking advantage of all the mercy that's given to us by the great souls in the form of their words and the literatures they produce, which is also their words, we have an opportunity to always keep the mind in the best situation where which will lead to devotional activities and devotional merit devotional credits like that so especially hearing and chanting the glories of the lord when it's done bodhiantas uh, parasparam katiantas chimam nityam tushyanti cha ramanti cha it gives satisfaction it gives pleasure and it brings the presence of the Supreme Lord upon the consciousness of the living entity. And that is Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness means to keep Krishna in our consciousness. And the activities of Krishna are also Krishna. Because on the spiritual platform, there are no differences between Krishna, his name, his form, his pastimes, his qualities, his deity, his entourage, his pure devotees, these are all part of the absolute non-different aspect of the spiritual nature. So therefore, um, although this is versus concessionary, and we see how, how Maharaj Preksha did this, he came upon, he came upon this a low-class man beating the, the legs of a bull. And the bull was personified religion, and the, leg, the three of the legs were broken. The Maharaj Prikshit didn't give Kali a, a chance to continue to perform any bad activities. He banned him from his uh, kingdom, and he told him that you have to go outside of my kingdom, and of course, he could have punished him right there. In fact, he could have killed him and he would have been completely justified being the king who was in charge of keeping law and order in the state. But he didn't do so 
And he said, you can go wherever there are four sinful activities or can be performed. No illicit sex, no intoxic, no illicit sex, intoxication, meat eating and gambling. These four principles are called the four pillars of sinful activities, but they're also items of knowledge. Items of knowledge because one who restricts themselves from the activities of these four pillars of sinful activity uh, is situated on the platform of, um, what's the word? Reinforced knowledge or that knowledge that keeps one connected to the spiritual level. And that knowledge will evolve and ultimately mature through the chanting and hearing of the glories of the Lord. Particularly mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam and along with the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the principles that one can follow very easily. So this verse is very concessionary. It really helps us to understand simply by keeping the mind in that pristine atmosphere, we can push back the effects of the A's of Kali. Now the mind is chanchala, as Krishna responds to Arjuna's question. Uh, Arjuna says, chanchala hi mana Krishna pramiti balava dridha tasyaham nigramam manye vayur idam saduskaram. He said to, Arjuna, to Krishna, you're asking me to control the mind, but I think it's like controlling the wind. It's turbulent, restless, unsteady, and always disturbed. So how can I control the mind? And then Krishna in the next verse says, practice, that's all. Practice and give up those things that cause the mind to go back into the material energy, sinful activities, uh, useless material activities and uh, materials that material activities that have no benefit on any level. In other words, because they're available, the living entity might take an interest in them, but then there's no benefit in it. Uh, frivolous, useless, or just whimsical activities. There are there are required material activities, and that's in relationship to maintaining the body. And for those who live in Grihasta life, maintaining the family. But those are practical and easily executable when one follows the principles that govern uh, the, the way in which one can perform these activities and, and not get entangled in the material turbulences that one can will you know continue to. Uh, and act simply by doing this, these activities for sense gratification. In other words, material activities are performed in order to stabilize one's life where they can perform spiritual activities with the maximum amount of effect. Yeah. Otherwise, they are material and useless, and they take away from one's Krishna consciousness, and they waste time also. Although they might not be sinful, they're just not, they're just not needed, that's all. And then, uh, of course, one should be very careful how the mind is moving this way and that way. One should learn to watch the mind and see where the mind is bringing one. We have a tendency to follow the mind and we think by following the mind, we're following what is best, but the mind can never be trusted. As Prabhupada mentions in one lecture on the mind from the fifth canto, sixth chapter, verse number three, that one should not trust one's mind because the mind can trick you at any moment. And it can also disguise uh, inauspicious or unbeneficial activities in the guise of something that is beneficial and auspicious. So the mind is very cunning. It's also very difficult. And then Krishna explains to Arjuna in response to Arjuna's question about controlling the mind, he says, practice. 
but then give up those activities which cause the mind to be diverted away from devotional activities. Okay. So these are some points we can think about in relationship to this particular verse, which is very interesting because we many times devotees become overwhelmed with wrong thoughts and they, they start to berate themselves because of that. But the idea is to get rid of those wrong thoughts by simply by replacing them with spiritual thoughts or thoughts of, of uh, bene thoughts that are beneficial to the welfare of others. Okay, so I'll uh, conclude here and we'll open it up for discussion. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. It was really nice talk on um, uh, on what actually comes in our mind. And basically, this is always, a hard, I always think that, uh, you know, if, if we think bad and if we do bad, what is the difference? Like what happens as karma wise? So it was really good talk devotees. If you have any questions, concerns, or self-realization, please unmute yourself and ask questions. Thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glory is to Srila Prabhupada and our glory is to you. Uh, thank you very much for this, this very, very useful to topic. And uh, it's, uh, I can really relate to it now. I, I just uh, started to think how I could apply, but I had this uh, problem many times that the negative thoughts uh, come also in a way that I have to solve a situation. And, uh, and I, I keep thinking on what I will do, but it's a negative way of thinking and how it's possible to get out, get out of this, uh, this mentality. It's a matter of attitude, how you're approaching it, that's all. Whatever is necessary or appears to be necessary in order to deal with the problem can be applied to the solution. So sometimes, just for instance, if someone is, someone is a problem and you're responsible to help that person, then you also may find yourself dealing with what that problem is, which may, may be negative or even sometimes sinful. But you look at it in a objective way and then you apply, well, what is the solution based on the individual? That's just an example. So you, I think this first more or less is that those negative thoughts that one uh, automatically comes in contact with due to association with the material energy. If it's, if it's in problem solving, then you also have to understand the problem. So that is not thinking of negative, that's thinking of the dynamics of the problem in order to apply or getting an understanding of what to apply in order to bring about a solution. So, I mean, we all have to struggle with solving problems. So you have to sometimes see the nature of the problem, but you don't get attached to that particular negativity and think that, well, that's nice. <laughs> but um, if things get too much in the, in the lower modes, sometimes even when we, when we try to solve problems, we find ourselves becoming uh, somewhat contaminated by that also. So therefore, just like I'll give you an example. Um, this is an interesting example may not exactly be in relationship to your question, but it shows you how one should react when the mind is apparently going in the right direction, but comes up with something that is uh, wrong or inauspicious. For instance, reading Radha Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan. Now, Prabhupada cautioned us, but he also recommended, and it's recommended in his writings too, that we hear the pastimes of Radha and Krishna and Sri Vrindavan down, which will help us overcome material lusty desires. But then again, Prabhupada cautions in his lectures, and he also writes about it, 
that if one's lusty desires are becoming greater when one is reading these things, then Prabhupada uses the, very strongly says to stop it immediately. Don't continue. You're not qualified to continue in that way. So there is a recommendation to go in that direction for purification, but if it comes out, we're becoming putrefied instead of purified, then uh, stop it, he says. So that's an example how something apparently beneficial, if one is not qualified to go in that direction, uh, one can get a different kind of response. So, and there, therefore, I think the answer to your question is, if you're dealing with these situations, you find yourself becoming pulled down by the situation, just like sometimes you're doing counseling with somebody and they're telling you their problems. And then you sometimes start to overemphasize, over empathize with them, over empathize. You start going into their, their role in the problem to understand more about the problem. It's like a doctor who has to get sick in order to understand what the patient is experiencing, but that's not the way to solve the patient's disease. The doctor stays aloof, understands, and then applies the medicine or the counseling in the same way. Uh, when we apply these things, if we are becoming pulled down into it, that means we're not qualified to do it. Very interesting, also these examples. Thank you very much. I, just for com uh, confirming uh, if I, I understand in a practical way that uh, um, so when, when we go into these negative thoughts and uh, uh, these are, are the mental platform and the mind, mind's doing, and if we somehow manage to engage the intelligence and overcome the mind, and somehow to, to make the intelligence the dominant, it might, might help, help us in this situation. Yeah, the intelligence is your saving grace, if your intelligence is strong enough. <laughs> because I was just thinking that maybe if I can find something which, which is uh, easy to read, to capture my, uh, my mind and the intelligence and just uh, distract me from this bad mood, and maybe, yeah. maybe that that might help. Yeah, something spiritual, like that's yeah, mentioned in the verse. You know, Krishna's leelas or the, or chanting mm -hmm. the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Mm -hmm. This is also something that devotees generally experience. Some bad thoughts come into your mind. You immediately say Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and then they're, they're usually they're dissipated simply by chanting Hare Krishna. And as it says, it goes back to the uh, principle that one should watch the mind and not be dragged around by the mind. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just sometimes really, really, Arjuna was really right that the mind, mind can be so strong. And yeah, yeah, I, I really have to learn how to. Uh, how to Just keep, keep it on Krishna? That's all. <laughs> as you keep it on Krishna, you, you put you purify it. As you purify it, it becomes more easily uh, controllable. Yeah, it's just so interesting that I, I noticed that uh, it's even so much nicer to 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 think about Krishna and spiritual uh, topics, and and it it really feels uh, better. But somehow. Even all the time, uh, I, I get uh, get into this trap of uh, of of engaging my my mind is in, in this kind of thoughts and and it's so interesting when we consciously yeah, because, you decide. might be fa fascinated by that. There's some fascination for that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, there was an old saying, curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> you know that saying? It's an English saying, curiosity killed the cat. Cats are curious. They go around and they look around this way, this way, this way, this way. 
So you watch a cat. He's they're curious about what's going on. They look in different directions. So the, the saying is curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> so if you get curious for the wrong thing. Thank you very much. It's, it's uh, really uh, helpful. I will try to practice. <laughs> just like, and I just reminded, reminded me of another thought, those who, who want to relieve the world of evil, they're always focusing on the evil and therefore they become affected by the same thing they're trying to get relieved of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. All right, Krishna. Just, just keep your mind on Krishna and everything is easy. <laughs> or thoughts of doing good to others, that's also uh, a way to keep the mind in the right position. Very, very useful and very practical. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj Ji, please accept oh. my humble obeisances. All <laughs> glories to Srila Prabhupada Ji. My Hare parents Hare. are visiting me. Hare Krishna. Hare, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Mataresh, Mataresh and <laughs> Mataji, how are you? Boy, you both look so effulgent. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj Ji. Thank you. <laughs> we are, you're, we are, in, you're in Florida. You're in Florida now, right? At, Atlanta. Atlanta Maharaj. Huh. Atlanta, okay. So, yeah, visiting with Manisha. Good. She comes and gives us some of her interesting insight that she learned from both of you about Krishna consciousness. <laughs> Maharaji, it's all your blessing. She has she has she, she's she grew up in Chicago, Maharaj, seeing you all the time in the temple. The, both of my kids are blessed with your blessings. Yeah, Dushan is my good friend. I always yes, love yes, Maharaj. They need they, they need your guidance. They need your blessings. Please keep us all. Continue to. <laughs> and we are looking forward to your next visit, Maharaj. The last <laughs> visit uh, uh, in Chicago was so wonderful. Uh, and nobody wanted to leave even <laughs> after such a you know, long hours, uh, and you were the, uh, sitting there and giving, you know, nectar to everyone, and it was so nice. That was in your high-rise apartment. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a good crowd that night. Yes. And somebody cooked a tremendous feast also. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, yeah, thank you. Nice to see both of you. I hope I hope your health is keeping you good. Yeah. Yes, is... Maharaj. Yes. We are blessed, yes. Maharaj. Uh, we do Kishore Kishori Seva once a week. So we are really blessed. We do go, we can go and do darshan during COVID. <laughs> good, 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 good. Yeah, I have plans to come to US, but I'm not sure exactly when, but it's on the list. Yeah, a few more months and it'll be, oh, yeah. But okay. Thank Hare you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj. How, how's your health, Maharaj? My health is pretty good. I, I mean, it's, it's really quite easily manageable. I have a good Ayurvedic doctor here that I regularly visit. <laughs> Great. Hare Krishna, Hare. Maharaj. Talk to you again somewhere. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. That was wonderful to see Krishna Manisha Mataji's parents. Yes, the teacher, we can ask a question. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Shri Prabhupada, all glory to the Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, I thank you uh, for the wonderful. Um, explanation of compassion <laughs> and the envy and how we can manage it ourselves but Maharaj I have one question um, which is regarding the chanting of the holy names 
So it is specifically mentioned and is specifically prescribed for this age. So that I get it. However, in the previous ages where the method of God realization, self-realization were either opulent temple worship or meditation or, or uh, fire sacrifices, in those ages, was chanting still the primary mode or, or would the chanting of the holy names still produce yeah. the same effect? It, it should have, but I'm just... Because, because we also hear that specifically it's good for this age because we cannot do meditation, we cannot do all the opulent worship, temple worship. Well, so, yeah, because um, I remember one discussion on this topic directed exactly according to your question. And the, the chanting of the holy name was always available, but it wasn't the yoga dharma. And it was too easy for most people. There has to be some austerity. And therefore, Krishna designates a particular type of uh, means for self-realization according to the level of the person, people's consciousness of that age. So in Satya Yoga, people were highly spiritually qualified. Therefore, you know, Astanga Yoga practice was the means for self-realization over a long period of time. And Treta Yoga, it was very gorgeous, costly, and exactly performed Agnihotras. The people were quite wealthy, and at the same time, uh, the mantras chanted by the, the priests were done according to the exact pure pronunciation. If any of the slight missing of the pronunciation, the whole yagya was considered to be, you know, null and void. We couldn't do that now. <laughs> and uh, the Bori Yuga deity worship, but not like the deity worship we have, Prabhupada said, uh, it was, he said, I'm 80% lenient in the deity worship category. In other words, people were much more uh, opulent in the worship and the worship was much more in detail. <laughs> was going deep into the Pancharatriki system. So for the people in each of those ages, that particular means for self-realization was an austerity. But in chanting of the holy name was so easy for people in those ages, it, it wasn't the Yuga Dharma, although people did chant the holy names, but not as a means for self-realization. You have to perform the Yuga Dharma according to the designated age. So we had Yuga Dharma in this age is Harinam Sankirtan. And that's difficult for us. <laughs> People don't want to chant. And I can say that, and I'm seeing that with devotees. They struggle to get their 16 rounds done, okay. And when they get their six day runs done, the bank beads get hung up until the next day. Nobody, it's all over. Life, life goes on in another way. There is no, people don't have, haven't developed an attachment for chanting the holy names. Very few devotees have. But unless we actually develop an attachment for the Yuga Dharma, it will not manifest. We have to understand chanting 16 rounds is simply the beginning. It's not the end. If you follow 16 rounds every day and, chant and follow the four negative principles every day throughout your whole life, you're qualified to go back home, back to Godhead. But who's doing that? Four regulative principles, 16 rounds from the time you receive initiation to the time you leave your body, you're qualified to go home but back to Godhead. But if you really want to taste the happiness of Krishna consciousness, we need to glorify the Lord more because Kali Yuga is so bad. It's just so full of faults and so full of negativity that just to keep protected from the influence of the age, one has to stay connected to Krishna. 
Otherwise, we could become victimized. It's just age is so bad. That's why I see devotees, they don't come to the second class platform. They stay as they stay on a neophyte platform, simply going on with their Krishna consciousness, but they haven't really developed a taste for Krishna consciousness, a good taste, a strong taste. That in taste enthusiasm causes enthusiasm, which brings about increased devotional activity. If you're not increasing your devotional activity, it's an indication you're not developing the taste for chanting. When you develop a taste for chanting, you will automatically increase both quality and quantity of your activities. So it's the austerity. So yes. That's why that's why in this age, chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is the Yuga Dharma because it's not easy for people. <laughs> But as that verse said, it's actually the boon in this age. It's the bright light in this age. It's the only savior in this age. It's the thing that makes the difference between self-realization and de degradation is the chanting of the holy name. But it's, so it's, easy. it's easy. Just chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> But we won't do it. <laughs> we just won't do it. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, well, I know that is fair. Yes, it is austere in the sense that our mind, especially my mind, would look into okay, after 16 down, what else? Rather than thinking, let's continue one round more, two rounds more. It, it mostly dwells on, uh, it comes across as a chore. I need to do this and then, okay, what's next? Yeah, so that, well, we just don't, you know, you may not be able to completely eradicate those thoughts, but you can just don't identify with them, that's all. <laughs> yes, you have mentioned that before. Yes, let it pass. <laughs> just don't identify with them. It's a nice little book. It's called 20 Affirmations on Chanting of the Holy Name. It's, it's a little tiny book about this big, you know, it's kind of like you can hold it and you can hold the whole book in your hand with one hand. And it's uh, just 20 different meditations that have come out of a series of um, workshops that were done by one of my god brothers named Mahatma, who put these together based on his workshops he did on chanting of the holy names of the Lord. And it's interesting because he gets right into the, all of the possible anarthas that we uh, experience when we chant. Yeah, that's the, uh, it's a nice little book. I think it's available in the UK. I'm sure it is. In fact, um, if you contact, uh, you know, yeah, do you know Janaki Nath, my uh, disciple? Yeah, or Roberto, who is with Janaki Nath, either one of the two, they can probably help you get a copy of that book. I studied that book. I bought 108 copies one time and I distributed them to devotees. Uh, I found it a nice meditation. Uh, helps to clarify some of the, uh, you know, challenges that we come upon that the mind brings up when we chant the Holy Name. And it also gives you a very clear, positive way to focus in the right way on chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. It's one of the best books, I think, on, the, on chanting the Holy Name. Thank you, Maharaj. I will, I, will, uh, I will try to get it. I think you'll find it very helpful, extremely helpful. 
And each meditation is very short, maybe a couple pages, but the pages are very small anyway. And it gets right to the point. <laughs> Mm. Thank you, Maharaj, for explaining it very nicely and giving some guidance on, on this book. Maharaj, uh, then just concluding on this one. So if in a Satya Yuga or in a, let's say Krita Yuga, if somebody also chanted along with meditation, the meditation, because it's austere, would, would, would have more precedence than or more effect than the holy name in that yuga? Uh, because it's the yuga dharma, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But one can chant anytime mm -hmm. in any age, but this age, it's been given the spotlight. Mm -hmm. Center stage. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you, Maharaj. Thank you. This clarifies. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna devotees, is there any other questions? We still have some time. Uh, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. Is all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to your holiness. Thank you for uh, reminding us again about the importance of chanting. I think it just cannot be said enough. Um, personally, it's such a struggle, such a struggle to constantly drag the mind and you know try and bring it back to the sound of the holy name. And uh, because uh, of COVID, we are all isolated and it's so difficult to do any spiritual practice now. So would you recommend that we as uh, devotees get together and try to do some um, japa together, try to do some kirtan together, just to get association of devotees and, and encourage each other in our, um, in our devotional practices? Yeah, for sure. 100%. This is what makes Krishna consciousness nice, sadhu sangha, keeping the activities as the basis for coming together. Kirtan, discussions, chanting, yeah. So would you, would you say that, say about 15 minutes before class, we can just, like we do, open the call and maybe we can just read out a Japa uh, affirmation and then we can chant for about 15 minutes or the days when people are willing to do Kirtan, we do Kirtan for about 15 minutes before class? Whatever you decide, both are good, whatever you want. I can't tell you how to organize. You have the ingredients, you organize it. <laughs> <laughs> With your mercy and blessings, Guru Maharaj, hopefully we can do something because it's a Prabhupada, great Prabhupada gave us everything and now he says, you apply it. He didn't say, I'll apply it for you. <laughs> you apply it. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj, we will try humbly with your blessings to do a little something so we can all encourage and enliven each other because you know, chanting is our foundation and it's, it's getting so difficult now with all these problems. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, you should read, did you, I don't think you got my letter yet, but I just sent you a letter just before the class. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> okay, think about it then. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for your mercy. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, devotees? Uh, Sudha Mataji, yes, you can go ahead. Yeah, yeah Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you, Mataji. Uh, Hare Krishna. Um, yeah, Hare Krishna, uh, Dhanu Pranam Maharaj, um, all glories to uh, Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you Maharaj. Um, I have a question about like, 
like uh, it's a very nice class uh maharaj you mentioned like uh, uh, if you have a bad thoughts um uh, unless and until you carry them you will not see any reaction and spiritual thoughts even if you don't actually um even if you have good thoughts even if you don't execute them still it will benefit you uh just like in that context maharaj i just have a question like a uh, scenario like you know nowadays like uh, when we turn on tv we see so many commercials and so many pandemic things going on like uh, we hear so many people suffering in so many ways so um uh, like uh, instead of developing a fear um like uh, uh, keeping the fear aside like as maharaj you gave example like doctors they stay aloof they understand and they try to serve patients so how can we develop that instead of like having a fear um, um and just keeping the fear aside and engage in the service and helping a person who's suffering like you know just a small scenario so situation like that mm. yeah well yeah. First of all, you have to be able to help that person. It's not like you can just simply. A person usually comes to another person for help because they think that person can help them. But if you feel like you can't help them, or you know someone else is more qualified to help them, it would be more beneficial for for both you and the person to to send them to someone. who you feel like you can get help but if you think you can help them and okay. that that means you you should have all the ingredients that you need in order to help them it shouldn't be something whimsical because if you say the wrong thing or you're not qualified to give counseling you can make the situation worse or you could confuse them or you could give them the wrong solution and then Mm-hmm. or and then it becomes more entangled in a problem so this is helping other persons means there should be a certain understanding of what you need in order to be put in that position so it's not for everybody to do that therefore referring to people who can help is one of the solutions of helping people mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if you think you can help them and you have the ingredients and you your thinking can help them means that you have an experience of doing this before and you've had good results you know because when you take on a peace person's situation you have to present you have to present your answers in a way that they can understand or make their own choice which will be the right choice it's not e counseling is a science it's not something another it's it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an art it's a technique you have to learn if you get caught up in the in the, in the negativity of trying to counsel somebody then you're not qualified to do that sir thank you so the chanting and uh, this regular reading will help maharaj to overcome uh, the fear yeah. and actually help uh, um yeah it gives you helps you to qualify yourself to do that yeah mm-hmm. just like in the united states of america it says that 250000 cases average per year are people dying from the cure that the doctor gives rather than from the disease that they come in with so in other words the doctors in many cases don't know even know how to cure the disease but they're in the position of doctors and they they apply the cure which becomes the cause of the death of the patient 250 250 cases per year in medical circles documented by the CDC that people die from the cure rather than from the disease this is a statistic that is easily available so in the same way when you're doing counseling you make we have to make sure your your solution doesn't cause them to get worse <laughs> 
You can't, it's not experimental. <laughs> I'm using that, I'm using the medical arena just to show you how people put themselves in the position of helping other people and it winds up the opposite. So good intentions is, is not good enough. <laughs> intentions are not good enough. People sometimes mix in sentiment. Prabhupada tells one, one story where one young boy in his village, this when he was growing up, the boy had typhoid fever. And the mother was restricting the child. The child was only three years old from eating solid food because the doctor had recommended that. Don't give him any solid foods. And so the mother had to go out. So she left her little son in the care of the older sister who was about 11 years old and said, don't feed him even if he cries because it would be bad for him. So mother went out, boy starts crying, give me paratas, I want paratas. So the little, her, his older sister's thinking, oh, my little brother, he wants something to eat. I should give him something. She completely ignored, forgot either way, the instructions given by the mother. She cooked it, fed to the boy. Fortunately, the boy didn't die, but when the mother got back, she was so angry with the girl and she was chastising her. The girl was crying, couldn't understand why she was being chastised. All she wanted to do was help her younger brother. But you can see the point. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Very true. Yeah. 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 So that happens. People want to help people, but they're not qualified to help, and therefore they make it worse. Mm. Very true, Maharaj. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Maharaj. So just uh, thank you so much. Uh, maybe I'll improve my chant and reading and uh, blessings from uh, realized souls from you, definitely. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. I, I would, can I add? Can I add one little thing? Yes, yes, Maharaj. Please. You sure? Um, please don't watch television. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's it's all garbage on there. <laughs> Complete mm. garbage. If we can only become polluted by television, television is simply a media for sense gratification, that's all. Mm. Very true, Maharaj. Yeah. Thank you, sure. Yeah, we, we have so many Krishna conscious videos we can watch. We have kirtans we can play. Mm -hmm. There's so, many, so much media that is available that is not in the area of television. When I, um, um, I, had, I have a book, it says, Four reasons for the elimination of television. And it was written in the 1970s when television was really popular, coming into vogue in that time. This man, there was Jerry Mander, he wrote this book, Four Reasons for the Elimination of Television. He could foresee the, the, the difficulties that television would bring. And so after some time, we gave it a name. We called television the idiot box. <laughs> idiot box, <laughs> it's not a very nice title. But then one senior sannyasi said, we, call, we don't call it idiot box. We call it a box for idiots. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not something... I mean, there's so many things that we can use our mind for, and television is is probably one of the worst forms of uh, destruction of spiritual principles that is available. One of my senior God brothers, who he used to, he was preaching. He pre still does. He preaches in India. He was preaching in India for I don't know forty some years, and he saw, you know, how. India was becoming more and more, you know, westernized. 
And one thing he said with, with um, in one lecture, I was there, there was about 5,000 people there. It was a Pandav program. It was in Mumbai. I was there also. He said, what, what the Islamic invaders could not do to India in 800 years, what the British couldn't do in 200 years, television has done in 20 years. <laughs> it's completely changed the whole culture of India into something very, very materialistic and not in a good materialistic way. And television is the biggest form of propaganda to exasperate and just increase our desires for material life. Mm. And, but Krishna consciousness has so much to offer through the media. We have so much. There are lectures, there's videos, there's so much that same type of media, but geared towards, you know, elevating our consciousness. And television is just When I was living in New Rindavan, we found that many devotees were keeping televisions. This was back in the 1970s. And this was in the 70s, maybe even the early 80s. What we did is that we sent out a missionary expedition and went to every house and collected their television. We came up with 40 televisions. <laughs> and then we just got rid of them. <laughs> It's, uh, you know, it's just not, not mentally at all healthy to watch television. So I just, just, I thought I'd mention it since you mentioned about the TV. So. Yeah. Uh, yes, Maharaj, thank you. I and mean, we just don't watch that much uh, television, but just I give an example, like uh, you have a desire to do service, but uh, when we hear about like, uh, you know, um, due to the fear, um, uh, not able to completely come forward and do that service, um, like, you know, current mm -hmm. things so I just took an example of television like when you turn on television we see so many pandemics so many things but uh, inside you have a desire you want to go and help the persons but due to fear you are not able to do the service so uh, so in that scenario I just took that example but yeah yes Maharaj I mean definitely we'll take your instruction television is not a good thing to I don't want to sound too strong, but I should say this. Anyone who is watching television cannot follow the four regulative principles. In other words, the four regulative principles are broken by watching television. <laughs> That's how bad that media is. It propagates the glories of the illicit sex, intoxication, meat eating and gambling and what do you see on television violence 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 it's a very it's all about violence yes. so thank you for bringing up the subject yeah thank you Maharaj. thank you so much all your instructions are very valuable thank you so much for your association Maharaj, i just have question uh, is it okay if i can ask it's not related to this class it's related to the deity class which you have given like a two days ago is that okay maharaj we postpone it till tomorrow because we we're, were actually oh, running out of yeah. time sure sure maharaj. Getting... yeah sure maharaj. yeah save it for save it for tomorrow and if i forget remind me yeah, sure, Maharaj. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for your wonderful association and today's talk. Okay. Thank you. And we can, we can, we can stop here. Yes, Guru Maharaj, we can. Okay.
my obeisances to everyone, Panchakopa, to Rubas Chak, Rubasindu Veva Chak, Titanam Bhavane Gyo, Vaishnava Gyo Namaho Namaha. Before we end, um, I posted something on the conference today. Uh, there is at six o'clock UK time tomorrow, which is, which is like an hour from now. Six o'clock UK time tomorrow, there is a discussion with the with Prahladananda Maharaj and Namras, who has the, the leading podcast in ISKCON on the present uh, health ep epidemic that's uh, affecting the whole, whole world. So I think it might be interesting. I haven't seen it myself. It's a it's the, it's the broadcast after the recording. So that's six o'clock. I to refer to the conference and you'll find the link and the information there. If you'd like to see it, I think it's worth watching. Okay, thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you very Hare much. Raj. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hey. Thank you very much, Guru Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Namrata. Thank, Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Ananda Vrindavan. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Vishwa Bhavani. Thank you for the wonderful class, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Susanna.